We're glad to know you're still there and watching us. It's The Breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. And uh, we have some headlines here uh, on, of the press that we'll be looking at. Um, let's start with the one of the national dailies. Uh, Daily Trust is where we're beginning our surgeon through the headlines this morning. Daily Trust leads with the um, headline, petrol price hits 700 naira per litre as federal government says no going back. The writers on that story are that uh, government to pay us 2.8 trillion naira deficit, that's according to Kiari, NNPCCL, NNPCL uh, NMDRA, marketers back the move. TUC, LP, SDP, kick say pronouncement ill-timed, and commuters hike transport fares. Okay, we... We also have uh, some other stories. Sokoto Governor Sachs, 14 monarchs, nullifies appointments of 23 permanent secretaries, others. Just two days inside um, the government house. NGX market value hits 3 trillion naira in single trading amid subsidy removal. Daura hosts special derba uh, to welcome Buhari. Okay, those are the headlines from Daily Trust. We will move now to The Guardian to take some more. The Guardian has this story, Nationwide Chaos, Pain, as stakeholders seek caution on subsidy removal. You can see that on page uh, 6 of The Guardian. It also has a story, Tinubu reinstates sanity as DSS EFCC squabble over property in Lagos. PEPC admits five exhibits from OB, printout of Bivas results from Atiku. And we also have Adedoyin, two hoteliers to die by hanging over murder of OAU student. Tinubu Shetima resuming Asu Villa as Nigerians await official appointments. Okay. Uh, those are the ones we will take from uh, The Guardian. We'll move to the next newspaper, which is Nature News. Nature News has it uh, that 90% uh, of textile waste in Africa, Asia, come from Europe. That's the report on page 3. Um, then uh, World Hunger Day. Afan emphasizes the need to attract young people to agriculture. We also have another story, a smaller headline, subsidy remark, petrol stations hike prices as scarcity returns after inauguration speech of Nigeria's president. And energy transition, scholars, activists embark on lobbying and advocacy tour in Europe. We have a sports news there, uh, which is, um, yeah, Nigeria wheelchair basketball picks 2023 African Games ticket. Now, the next newspaper we'll be looking at the headlines is The Punch. The Punch newspaper, this one leads with fuel cells 600 naira per litre, queues worsen as filling stations shot. That is on page two. Um, the riders are Tinubu, NNPCL, GMD, others meet. Framework for removal underway. Federal government cannot fund subsidy again, owes NNPCL, 2.8 trillion naira, says Kiari. Kwara, Ekiti, Bayelsa, governors, others warn marketers against hoarding. Smaller headlines there. Tinubu inherits over 16 trillion naira uncompleted project. 11 trillion naira spent on moribund refineries in 13 years, according to House of Reps. And ASU, cut OKs, no work, no pay policy. Then uh, below uh, the major headline, we have National Assembly Anti-Zoning Group Condemns Alleged Plan to Arrest Betara Yari. And Oyo Police Storm Auxiliary Hideout Arrest 78 with Arms. We also have the story Adedo Yin Workers Back Death Sentence Hotel Forfeited. Okay, those were the headlines from uh, the four dailies that we decided to take uh, this morning. And so we're glad to uh, be joined by um, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State uh, by, in the person of Tunde Kolawole. Uh, Tunde, good morning and welcome to the program. Once again, thanks for having me. Okay, um, well, um, we're glad that you woke up with a smile, I hope. 
and then uh, Nigeria mm. is working. Mm? <laughs> Fuel sales, uh, according to some newspapers, is for 700 naira, and others are for 600 naira. Uh, most of the filling stations we've heard uh, that are selling very high at a very high price are selling for 600 naira. The one of 700 naira uh, is new to me, but it is possible. And that is what is happening right now. Feeding stations are shutting down and uh, those who are selling are selling at three times the price they were selling or even more uh, than that. But fuel subsidy is the cause of what is happening right now. So a lot of people, stakeholders have said that the way it was removed, it shouldn't have been removed. But this is something that has been spoken about for a very long time. What is your take on the pronouncement of the president on the day of inauguration that fuel subsidy has been removed, especially seeing what has, uh, that um, effect has been, the effect of that pronouncement has been? Well, let me quickly say that uh, he who floats it and knows it all. I went out yesterday from uh, Palm Grove to Surulere and uh, the transport fare from Surulere I mean, from Pangu to Surulere and back, cost me almost 3,000 naira. In the past, I would have spent less than 1,000 naira to commit between those places. So, if the fares have gone up, it is a reflection that the transporters are also no longer buying petrol and diesel at the old rate at which they used to buy it. So that is one. The second one is that uh, the Nigerian people are paying for the inefficiency for the violation of duty and the incompetence of its ruling allies. If a Dangote, an individual, can build a refinery that has not been judged, the biggest and one of the best in the world, what excuse does the government that has more resources, that has more personnel, that has more goods, that has almost everything, a la carte on the platter of gold. What excuses do they have not to be able to build more refineries and run the whole refineries very, very efficiently? But they cannot do it simply because they are not uh, wired to do so to say because of uh, corruption. You remember about a year or two ago, they had gone person, President Muhammad Buhari, and what the Jumbo contract for the turnaround on some of the old refineries in the country? What has become of that uh, a contract? At that period in time, some of us uh, raised an eyebrow and said, look, you are a few months uh, from uh, leaving office, about a year or two from leaving power. Why don't you allow the incoming administration to handle that uh, project? And look at what you have read uh, in the papers this morning, that the Afghan government has left several trillion of uh, contracts, abandoned contracts, or incompleted or uncompleted contracts all over the place. So that is one. The third one is um, also that uh, when the APC people were coming into government in 2015, they categorically told us that there is uh, nothing like a first subsidy, that what we've been having is just a phantom subsidy, which the allies have been using to enrich their colleagues, sponsors, and, uh, and their relations. So what has happened between 2015 and 2023? That they are not talking and saying that they use they use trillions of naira to subsidize the um, uh, petroleum products. So that is another one. The other one is that they told us that before the subsidy will be removed, they will have put on ground a whole load of palliatives to cushion the adversity of the removal of the subsidy. We've always had that during the era of the uh, Aganga when uh, Aganga was um, I think when he was um, uh, the Minister of Finance, or they are about, and all that. He even told us that there are all manners of not building cars, and there are many electric buses on the IC waiting to be discharged. And that uh, the when immediately the subsidy is removed, those buses will uh, hit the gun running, carrying Nigerians from uh, one place to the other. Ever since Aganda left office several years ago, we haven't seen a single on one of those buses that they say was on the ICO at Apapa and Tinkan Island to be discharged. So, it's all loads of uh, uh, propaganda, 
that we hear from the ruling elite with regard to these petroleum issues. And you add to it uh, the massive uh, stealing, the massive theft, the massive oil bunkering that is going on in the Niger Delta area. Could it be that it is you and the ordinary person that is involved in that? The answer is no. It is also the Nigerian ruling elite that are breeding the economy of the country by engaging in massive, massive uh, uh, bunkering and teasing of uh, petroleum products. And when they are also stealing it, they also have one quarter to themselves to safeguard, to protect, to provide security for the entire pipeline. You no, know, it's like uh, uh, asking uh, the pushy cat to provide or give security or protect the uh, uh, roasted uh, uh, men. But with that as it may, I want to say, the excuses that the ruling allies have always given up for their inefficiency, for their lack of performance, for, their, for the lack of development in the country, is because of this petroleum subsidy. So let them remove it and let us see what, uh, what other excuses they will have for their misgovernance, for their inability to perform, for their inability to develop the economy. But thanks to that number, I keep on saying, China has proven that you can run a central economy, you can run a socialist economy, you can run a, the government can run businesses and still make it a, a viable and successful and profitable. Unlike the story that we are telling us, they are telling us in Nigeria, that capitalism is the only thing. Without capitalism and profit, then you cannot run a, a business. China has a that and they've proven that that is not a right. The, the, the economy, their growth is one of the fastest in the world. And China today, can be said uh, to be faster going than even the United States of America, which uh, used to be the hub of most developmental projects uh, in the past. So that's why let them remove it and let us see what other excuses they will have for their inefficiency, for their poverty, for the lack of development, for lack of infrastructure, for lack of decade, for lack of job for the youth of this country. But at the end of the day, if the infrastructure will come up and there's, then people do not even find the money to maybe, say, travel on roads that will be built, uh, to, to go to the cities that will be improved and developed and all that, at the end of the day, it means that no work has been done. Uh, right now, um, does it not worry you that the, f the, the, the president met with the NNPC, GMD, and other people to fashion out a framework for the removal of the subsidy? They are, he just met with the people to fashion out a strategy, to fashion out a framework for the removal of subsidy that has already been removed. Why do they keep well, doing this? That and, is and the, now like NNPC is saying that the federal vote. government is owing them a lot of money. Uh, my brother, that's like putting the cat before the horse. What they have done would have been to put uh, the palliative regime on ground several months before the removal of the so-called uh, phantom and before the removal of the so-called uh, uh, subsidy. If they have put the palliatives on ground and all that, I am sure, and then also a modality by which you are going to transit from the so-called subsidy regime from the low subsidy regime. The chaos that we are seeing on the roads in the petrol stations and all that will not be there. It is not impossible, and what we are seeing or that we are back to the era of the Aganda, uh, we will be told they are going to be palliative, but at the end of the day, we are never likely to get anything. Even if they are planning the palliative regime, where is the money for them to really run the palliative regime? The country that is almost a bank that is going trillions of naira to all manners of creditors, both foreign and, uh, and uh, local. Where will they get the money to run uh, the palliative? I don't see it uh, coming. Uh, but most times, government will want to say very sweet things to their citizens so that those citizens' uh, directiveness in the fighting can be tampered. That is my suspicion. Okay. But, uh, what they are telling us now, asking NNPC to fashion out um, the palliatives, uh, is just to tampon the directiveness in the fighting. And even if they are going to run the palliative, it is not the NNPC that is going to do it. It's going to be a program between the Minister of Finance, Minister of Budget, Minister of National Planning, and uh, some of these other technical uh, 
uh, departments uh, in government mm. and not the NNPC. Don't forget that NNPC has been privatized. It is not expected to run as a kind of uh, a limited liability, profit generating, a private concern that will only pay profits to government at the end of every business season and not to start uh, running financial regimes for government. Oh, well. Okay, let's let's just uh, break away from the um, from petrol and all that because there are so many other things we could have even talked about. The fact I that agree uh, with you. the the fact that eight years of the thirteen years that we've heard uh, that um, the federal government spent so much on the moribund refineries were of the Buhari administration. By implication, the APC administration eleven trillion naira was spent on moribund. Mm -hmm. uh, Maribond uh, uh, refineries and all that. Anyway, like I said, let's leave um, fuel. Uh, Where are all those money gone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody's talking about that. Right now they are owing NNPC of, of more than mm -hmm. 2 trillion naira. But the, mm -hmm. the courts also have uh, made a pronouncement that no work, no pay. So whatever ASU is asking for cannot be given to them. So eight months of their lives have gone because they protested. What is your take on this pronouncement by the court of no work, no pay? As regards to ASU, not even any other body under NLC, but ASU, the lecturers that uh, will have to teach our children. Well, um, the law is law, and the law is uh, described as uh, whatever decision that the court may come up with. When you look at all the instant people laws in the country and all that, you tend to agree with the industrial court, which says that when you withdraw your services, when you don't work, you are not expected uh, uh, to be paid. Okay, Tunde, uh, Tunde just, not... just a moment, Tunde. Uh, this is why I asked right. the question. I, want, I just want to understand. Before now, I was asking myself this. I was thinking aloud. Um, lecturers, okay. lecturers teach children in school. They teach our children in school. So yeah. they went on strike for eight months. And when they returned from the eight months, they are expected to cover the syllabus that they didn't do, the whole work that they didn't do in eight months. They are expected to cover it. So yeah. if you talk about no work, no pay, does it really apply to these people who have to cover the work that you say that they didn't do? Are they paying the price of not being in class for that time or not doing the work? Because there are two different things. Because if I come back from wherever I went to and I still have to do the work that you said I should do, then you cannot hold me that I didn't work, I didn't do my work. It was just at that time that I was showing you that I was angry with you, that I stayed off work. But I came back and did everything I was supposed to do within the eight months. Does this law really apply to them? Make it make sense to me. Well, that's really the thing in what you're saying. But the law does not operate that way. When you go to court, there are three elements that are involved. There is the fact, there is the also what we call law, I and mean, then there's evidence. If the actual people have gone to court and put evidence before the court that in spite of the fact that they went on strike for eight months, everything that was affected in terms of teaching, in terms of supervision, in terms of research and all that, they were still able to do it. I am sure the court may have a different opinion with regard to the change that it has taken now. But if you go to court and you don't say, as you know, you think the court will know or that the court will realize that all you are expected to do is still going to do that you have done it, then the court will not, uh, if you didn't put that fact on the ground before the court, then the court will not find for you, will not rule in your favor. So that is where the law sometimes is described uh, as a kind of uh, an ash. But you must also remember it was the federal government that took us to court and not the other way around. Mm. And then again, too, when people go to court, apart from what you're asking for, there are sometimes some uh, 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 things that flows, what you call consequential uh, uh, orders. The courts also look at some of those things. So, 
it is not the end of the day, even for our two people, they could see a fee based on the constitution, on fundamental rights, on constitutional uh, uh, issues, go to the court of appeal, go to the Supreme Court, for a different interpretation and perspective on the decision that has been taken by the industrial uh, uh, court. But like I said, when you are before a court, you will use law, you will use facts, you will also use evidence that is available to you. You don't assume anything. Mm. You don't assume anything. Oh, okay. So uh, let me, it's the same thing, but let me just ask. What if ASU decides that, okay, for any time we go on strike, whatever we're going to do, we'll just come and start from a, a, a fresh slate and leave the things that we left behind and just go? Can the government take them to court again? Because they, they, they will forfeit their, their salary and say, okay, we're not taking our salary, so for that we're not also working. Let it be very balanced, that we didn't work and we're not going to work. Of course, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful question you have asked. Uh, and I will reply to that by simply saying that uh, employment between an employer and employee is a contract. And just like marriage is a contract. If at a particular period in time, you know, not like on you to discuss certain responsibilities and all that. And you fail, the fees or decline or neglected to discuss those responsibilities and all that. Of course, the person that you hold that responsibility can go to court and say, look, this person has breached this contract. Uh, you, the court, kindly compel him to do what is expected of him. And uh, the one he has refused to do, Sanction him, either by awarding damages or whatever, so as to uh, serve as a deterrent for, for future refusal, for future negligence, uh, and what have you. So, that is uh, all you have for what we call specific performance, compelling to do what is expected to do, or that which he has uh, failed uh, uh, to do. So, I say this uh, both are true, both the federal government can always go to court if they feel that any aspect of the contract between the two parties has been breached. But you see, that was why it would have been better to take this matter of us to a kind of negotiation or arbitration because the court may have been interpreting the whole letters of the law. But if it was an arbitral uh, panel that they were facing, uh, those ones have a way of deciding cases based more on what I would call uh, equitable uh, remedies. They are not looking strictly at the core letters of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the law. Uh, they would have looked at the ASU side, they would look at the federal government side, and then uh, approach the issues from the middle of the road, in which there is no go to. Uh, today... This is not the time we should have lost you, but, um, well, we're hoping that Tunde will reconnect with us. Tunde Kolawole is a legal practitioner here in Lagos State, and we're interrogating some of the things we've seen on the headlines. We, we talked first about the uh, fuel scarcity that has been occasioned by just a single pronouncement by the president, and that was that fuel subsidy has been removed. Now is the time that the uh, the government is sitting down with NNPC and other stakeholders to fashion out ways uh, to, um, to alleviate the sufferings of the people uh, because of the fuel subsidy removal. So why didn't they do that before now? We asked that question and also we asked about why, um, how, uh, why, uh, whether it is fitting for the courts to just pronounce that no work, no pay for a group of people like ASU, the lecturers in the university that may have to come back to do all the work that they are not going to be paid for just because they stayed home. We were trying to uh, interpret the law there. But uh, we are going to take a break now and look at what the weather is uh, saying or uh, weather experts are saying. And when we return, we'll go to something else. Stay with us.